A new organization buying $1 million in advertisements to support the fight against critical race theory, the Free to Learn Coalition, running anti-CRT ads on both national networks and local television stations with a focus on the New York City, Arizona, and Virginia areas. The president of the Free to Learn Coalition, Ali Mare, witnessed the explosive school board meetings like the one in Loudoun County and believes parents need more resources and a platform to raise their concerns. She joins us now. Ali, good to see you. It's been a long time. So this new coalition, Free to Learn, you are arguing that people advancing political agendas is beginning to overshadow what the schools are really there for, and that is to educate our children in important subjects. Make your case. That's exactly right. We're seeing that on the international scale, the United States has fallen behind countries like China, Russia, Canada, God. Estonia, Slovenia. We're just not doing very well. And a lot of that is because we're seeing this focus from academic achievement go to the creation of political activists. So you mentioned China there. The United States is the most powerful country in the world, but we have competition. China would like to become the most uh, uh, powerful country in the world. According to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development in the year 2018, which the, is the latest year that they have statistics for, the United States ranked 25th in math, science and reading. Guess who ranked number one? China. <laughs> they, China. Really, they really do want to eat our lunch. And if we continue down the path that we're on, will they be able to? Well, you raise a good point, and this becomes at, at some point a national security risk. Um, but what I think is, is most interesting about this is that we have parents all across the country who are joining this coalition who are concerned with the future for their own children. Um, this movement has really come to light because of the COVID pandemic, where we've had a year of virtual learning and parents have had a front row seat in their kids' classroom, and they've been able to see what exactly their kids are being taught, and quite frankly, they're fed up. Right. Uh, you, you uh, again, as we said, have launched a $1 million ad buy. There are targeted ads in various states and also a national ad. Let's play a little bit of the national ad. We'll get you on the other side. Sure. While our students fall behind the world in reading, writing, math, and science, New York City's Grace Church School is employing a curriculum that demonizes children based on skin color. Fairfax County, Virginia, is turning the best school in the country into a casualty of political activism. You know, both of those cases have become national news. The Grace Church, of course, uh, the Grace Church School in New York, we've covered a lot. The other reference is to Thomas Jefferson High School, which is consistently ranked the number one high school in the nation. The, the talk there is to limit enrollment among Asian students because they're taking too many slots. So, so, so this whole idea is causing like d different racial divisions than we've traditionally had in this nation. What, what, what direction are we going in here? Oh, absolutely. And if you look at that district as a whole, we're seeing an 83 percent rise in failing grades. Ten thousand students have and their families have fled the district because they're unhappy with the education that they're receiving. Um, Fairfax <coughs> County is in trouble and parents have have come forward and have come to us and are joining our coalition to help point that out. You know, we, we talked about that Loudoun County School Board meeting uh, last Tuesday at which a number of people were arrested. One of them is a fellow named John Tiggis. Uh, he is basically saying that the parents are feeling helpless in all of this. Listen here. As I was standing there in the front of the room and realizing that people were felt like they had no options after the school board left, um, that's what I, I felt. The, the reality is clear. They don't want to listen. Uh, Ali, your organization seeks to hold school boards and administrators accountable. How do you propose to do that? And so that, that's exactly right. That's what we plan to do. So we can come in and help to raise awareness and make sure that these conversations are truly happening at a hyper local level. Um, I know you've reported on this before. Mm -hmm. As parents start to come forward and the school boards aren't listening to their concerns, there's even another layer here where parents are being doxxed. Um, they're being pointed out by members of their community. Other parents are calling their places of work. And so what we hope to be able to do is give parents the tools to be able to have those conversations with school boards but also like we're doing with this national and, and three place local um, ad campaign is to really shine a spotlight on some of these big problems so that we can activate other parents across the country and have them ask questions and start these conversations with their own school boards. Ali Mare of the Free to Learn Coalition, uh, thank you for joining us today. I expect we're probably going to see a lot of you between now and next <laughs> fall. Appreciate your time. Talk to you soon. All right.